We've remade the Enderman five different ways from scratch, hiring five developers to create five different versions of one of Minecraft's spookiest mobs, each of which come with a set of new items for you as an explorer to check out. But more importantly, in order to get those items, you're going to have to embark on some serious new Enderman battles. It gets pretty nasty. You gotta check this out. Now, this first Enderman remake begins with this monolith that will rarely spawn throughout your Minecraft worlds. It acts as a portal to a new dimension that replaces the end in Velvoxel Raptor's remake of the Enderman. Walking into the monolith will give you blindness. And that's about it. Until you bring a victor, er, a friend <laughs> with you. Ah, uh, Betsy, you will have to do so. This lovely little cow is going to be joining us on our adventure. Simply bring the cow into the monolith, or any creature for that matter, and together you'll instantly be teleported to a brand new area. Okay, Betsy, maybe you should just stay here for now. We'll go ahead and tie you up, and we have been just placed in an extremely desolate new area. Brand new dimension. Purple water, dead trees all over, and what looks to be the new Enderman. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of hunting, we'll be back Betsy, to find this new Enderman because they'll periodically spawn in in this dimension. Oh look, there's literally one right there. And we're going to need to be extremely careful because the moment you find one of these Endermen, the weather around you will begin to take shape. Grainy, nasty dirtiness. And once that Enderman has caught eyes on you, you are in for some trouble. Because in this dimension, the Enderman is essentially invincible. It will slowly approach you, giving you nausea effect as well as blindness. And if it gets too close, it will damage you as well as give you hunger and weakness so that you can deal essentially no damage to it. But what's more, it's got about 500 hearts of health. So good luck taking it on in this world. We're gonna have to bring it home. To do that, make sure the Enderman has locked its gaze upon you and slowly make your way back to one of the various monoliths that will also spawn in in this dimension. We're gonna have to get you back, Betsy. Ah, uh, and we're gonna have to time it pretty perfectly as well. It's okay, Betsy. Everything's gonna be fine. Just don't look behind you. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, I think that this Enderman is going to be close enough, so if we just bring you on back, Betsy, and head on in, we'll go back to the overworld. Unfortunately, Betsy didn't make the cut, but in Betsy's place, is the spirit of the Enderman. It takes the shape of this purple ethereal spirit that will slowly travel around until it finds a new victim to take over. And the moment it does, it will instantly try to take over the life force of, an I, of another nearby mob. It's the Enderman is literally inside of this chicken and you'll have to defeat the chicken or at least do your best to in order to defeat this Enderman. Doing it enough times, oh my gosh, it is literally impossible, we're gonna have to run. Easy does it, easy does it, easy does it. Come on, get the chicken. <laughs> I can't deal any damage to this thing. But once you are able to, with enough time, you'll see that it will take over another nearby mob and you can slowly kill each of these things while the Enderman finds its next victim. Now, in the event it happens to find a villager and take that thing over, well, you're in for a serious treat, or perhaps a nightmare. Watch as this poor innocent villager eventually gets taken over by this Enderman spirit. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I think he just found the villager. Oh, he got him! Okay, and now so when a villager is infected by the Enderman, it has some seriously additional powers. Namely, it's got the ability to consume other mobs instantly, getting a strength boost as well as a speed boost, only avoiding other fellow villagers. So this guy's got a lot of additional health, and once you defeat the Enderman as it's taken over a villager, well then you get to actually see the Enderman's final form. Now, this takes a little bit, so <laughs> bear with me. Okay, we killed him, and now here's the final Enderman in all of his majesty. He'll punch on you, and he looks real nasty once again. Easy does it, man. Enderman, Enderman, Enderman. Now, this guy's got a whole mess of health and is also capable of picking up your items and wearing them in the event you manage to kill it. So I recommend you get this guy stuck in a corner as we have as well, or you won't stand much of a chance. But the moment you're able to kill this guy, which we'll very easily do by giving ourselves a huge strength bonus, you'll be rewarded with two special items. One of which is the Enderman's head, which you unfortunately cannot wear, but you can place down as a trophy. The other item, though, is far more sinister. 
It's known as the Hive Potion, and upon drinking it, you'll be given a Hive Effect for two minutes, which turns you into the very spirit that you saw possessing other mobs, which you now can do as well by simply walking into them. We are now this cow. <laughs> and the, the armor made it a little bit less obvious, but now we've, we've taken over control of this cow. This is amazing. What's more though, if you happen to die while you are in this cow's form, well, you'll instantly turn back into that spirit and you are capable of taking over another mob. In fact, you're capable of taking over any mob you want. It doesn't have to just be animals. It can literally be anything. Allow me to demonstrate as we summon a creeper right where we are standing. So, creeper. Oh, man. Right here. We're now walking around as a creeper. And you can take over any mobs that you please so long as your hive effect is active. That is a really cool enderman. Our next Enderman involves us enlisting the help of a local researcher to help us locate this new Enderman. Now, whether we're going to want to locate it is still up for question. Because as you can see, he means serious business. The researcher villager is a new villager type that will spawn in in villages from time to time and contains a plethora of new and various trades, some of which require new items like ender ingots but what we're really looking for here is a whole bunch of ender pearls because that is the key to summoning in the enderlin which is the new enderman that has been added in wasps remake of the enderman so don't mind if i do we've got some pearls here we're gonna need a couple more because the idea here is in order to spawn in this enderlin you'll actually need to occasionally get one to spawn by using ender pearls now this is an extremely rare chance of occurring so what we've done instead is <clears throat> what we've done instead is just bring a button along that will allow us to more easily spawn in this enderlin right away So we're gonna go ahead and gear up grab a bow sword We've got some food on hand as well as some armor and here is the enderlin in question now This enderlin will swap between crossbows and swords and if you manage to get hit by the enderlin's crossbow It will actually teleport you closer to it where it will assault you with its ender sword so be very careful when battling this thing because the moment you get too close, he will begin to attack you. If he manages to swipe you with his ender sword, it will teleport you into the air, dealing massive amounts of fall damage. So while the crossbow doesn't deal any major damage to you, it is key to getting you that much closer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> to dying. But hey, this enderman does not have too much health. And upon death, it's actually capable of dropping one of the various two items it manages to hold. Whichever one is appearing the moment it dies is the drop chance that you'll get. And in this case, we got our hands on an Ender Sword. Let's spawn in another. As you can see, when you deal damage to the Enderlin, it will actually teleport around. And so we're gonna wanna make sure that we defeat this Enderlin when it has its crossbow handy so we can get our hands on this as well. But okay, so what do these two items do exactly? Well, they do exactly what we saw them being used by the Enderlin. So, the sword will cause mobs to instantly be teleported into the air for a large amount of fall damage, perfect for dealing with any nearby dummies or their children. <laughs> and more importantly, the Ender Crossbow will allow you to teleport mobs that much closer to you, bringing them within three blocks of range so that you can instant... Oops. So that you can instantly switch to your sword and kill them. So then where exactly do we get these Ender Ingots that we've been seeing? Well, ender pearls can now be smelted into ender ingots using a blast furnace. So, have your blast furnace handy, and as you can see here, the moment it cooks entirely through, you'll be able to get your hands on this latest and greatest new item, known as the ender ingot. Which serves two main purposes. You can use them to make armor, ender leggings, ender chest plates, ender helmets, and naturally those ender boots, which you can actually use as protection when wearing them against any enderlins, because they will lose their aggressive values the moment they spot you with one of these. Check it out. Yo, we good now, baby. Doesn't want to attack me. What's more, you can use the ender ingots to actually barter with enderlin, and if you're lucky enough, you'll get one of numerous different items from their bartering drop table. Ooh, we got our hands on some chorus fruit. You know, which kind of sucks, but <laughs> whatever. Here is the full list of the items you can get from bartering. More pearls, eyes of ender, we've got I Oh gosh! Oh, they also don't like when you <laughs> open chests. End stone and crystals, ender chests, purple blocks, rods, chorus fruit, flowers, and obsidian. I appreciate the donation. Now, believe it or not, this next Enderman remake actually takes place in the end. 
Except you'll find this new Enderman in a new structure. And frankly, I wouldn't recommend you get too close. Otherwise, you'll have to take on Das Jaff's recreation of the Enderman. So, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a sword and see if we can take him on indeed. So, the spawn mechanics are as such. The new Enderman is found in a new structure in any dimension. The Enderman Shrine. Now, the Enderman in question over there will actually stay dormant in place until you get too close to said Enderman. The moment you do, you'll see this Enderman come alive, and it will hit you with two different attacks, which you'll see in just a second here. Oh, gosh! Ooh. First of all, you'll be hit with a special new effect known as Televenom, which will turn your hearts into Eyes of Ender, and it will slowly teleport you and poison you at the same exact time. On top of that, the new Enderman will teleport around and attempt to shoot lasers at you, which, if they hit you, are capable of dealing a ton of damage. Now, we're going to have to try our best to actually attack this Enderman. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's giving me some trouble. There we go. We got one good swipe in on it. Let's try and get another one. Man, this is so, this is so disorienting. I am so happy we have on some serious health regen right now because otherwise this would be a very nasty battle. And you can also see that the Enderman will blink at you from time to time. Nice little effect there. Got another swipe in on him. Okay, easy does it. Oh man, this is so rough. Oh, I'm about to die now. This is not what I had in mind. Oh yeah. Oh, wow, he literally teleported right next to me. Easy does it. Okay, maybe we should get a little bit further away first. Please. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Keep running this way. Please don't impact me with it. There. We got him. Holy moly. That was hectic. But be glad it's over because you'll be treated with a brand new type of shield for your survival world. Ooh, this guy looks real nice. The shield in question is known as the Purpurum Mirror, and it comes with some really exciting effects. We're going to go over those in just a second here. But worth noting that you can now make Ender Pearls. All you need is a fire charge and some purple blocks. And just like that, you can add them to a crafting table so that you've got easier access to Ender Pearls at a moment's notice. So what does the shield do? Well, it emulates the power of the Enderman we saw from just a second ago. Namely, you can right-click to impact nearby mobs with the Televenom effect, which will poison them and cause them to teleport periodically, dealing damage to them slowly but surely, or potentially <laughs> causing them to fall off the edge of the island there. You'll be able to take on a lot of mobs. And what's more, you can kind of spam-click this thing. It's, it's pretty impressive. Seriously, this is some overpowered stuff, but hey... <laughs> in my eyes, it's worth it. This is going to be one shield that you're going to be using more for offense rather than defense. Hopefully more on more than just on cows. <laughs> Capable of warping reality around us, the Endermine is Ambiguous Chameleon's rendition of the Enderman. So we first go over some of the abilities of this creature. First of all, the Endermine will only spawn in if the player has not gone to bed in a good long time. Nightmare fuel. Most of the Endermine's attacks take place in the form of hallucinations and mind tricks, such as mobs randomly turning into rainbow sheep around us. Chickens beginning to circle around your head periodically. Extreme forms of creepers appearing all around, upside down no less. And various illusions capable of attacking you that will go down in one simple hit. However, defeating the Endermine will leave us with a fantastic new item. So we're going to simulate not going to sleep for a while and actually summon in an Endermine nearby. Oh my goodness. And it is instantly attacking us all over the place. Now the Endermine will periodically teleport around all over the place. And you'll have to do your absolute best to, oh my gosh, avoid all of the rainbow sheep and skeletons slowly making their way all around. Now again, this Endermine is constantly moving. And so we're going to need to locate... Oh, wow. He's all the way over there. With any luck, we can actually attack the... Yes, we can. We can attack the Endermine with a bow. Now, that is not normal to normal Endermen. So, with any luck... Yes. Wow. Yo, he is seriously traveling all over the place. In fact, where did... Is, is he... Is he over there? It's hard to tell. There's, like, birds in my face. Oh, my gosh. Look at that creeper. Nasty. Easy does it, guys. Oh, goy. Oh, no. So bad. I'm so glad that the skeletons at least die pretty much instantaneously. Okay, there's the Endermine. He's moved once again. Even the sheeps are looking to attack us. This is just bad news all over the place. This is just written with danger everywhere. Now, where is the Endermine now? He's moved again. Usually the mobs will... Sp yeah, there he is. Usually the mobs will spawn nearby where the Endermine is. I the skeleton just goofed me up real good. <laughs> Get out of my face, chickens. Come on. 
Normally you could attack them, but in this case, they're just giving me a heck of a time right now. So hopefully he didn't just teleport again. I would be massively upset. No, okay, he's good. Still in the same place. So then he like, bam, got him. And just like that, we took him out and we got 14 hungering oi, hungering oys for our trouble. Okay, we need to get out of here fast. <laughs> the hungering eye item will pull the nearest entity nearby towards us, instantaneously allowing us access to take out that mob right away. Or you can pull in an item from a tricky spot. So over here, what we'll have is an item that will appear right up there. And if we throw the hungering eye nearby it, well, there we go, just like that. Get our hands on the most amazing rabbit stew in the world. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Let's, oh. Right. Perhaps we can use this to corral some animals nearby into a pen. Or or, or yours truly, I suppose. <laughs> Apparently, it'll get you nearby as well. So, let's get the pick. There we go. Yeah, now you're stuck inside. Can't do nothing. You can also use the hungering eye alongside some netherite ingots to make a new item known as the Watcher's Eye. Check this thing out. You can actually put it on your head, and now you've got the ultimate clockwork eyeball working. It's magic. While warned, the eye will highlight all mobs in the nearby area. Pigs, armor stands. Furthermore, you can see it works actively on all new mobs. Plus, it also makes you look like one cool dude. Quite fly. Yes, sure. <laughs> We're here in the end once again, and as you can see, there's something interesting going on with all of the Endermen as they're quickly blipping in and out of existence. It might have something to do with our final Enderman remake, which is definitely not a retextured blaze, seriously. We find out more about the unstable Endling as we check out Godlander's rendition of the Enderman. Now, the only place you can find these guys is in the End Cities. There are monster spawners that will spawn in these new creatures in the vertical tower section of your various different end cities. So, with any luck, we can find them relatively quickly. I'll spare you the trouble of watching me parkour all the way to the top of this. But what's new to these towers is this mob spawner that is slowly dangling from the center of it. And this is what spawns in our new creature. If you're bold enough to attempt to make it to the top by traversing the different end rods and purpose slabs located throughout this center room, you'll be met with an interesting challenge indeed. Now, hopefully I don't fall, uh, otherwise I suppose we could just use the <laughs> shulkers to get us- Oh, okay, well, this is what creative mode is for, so don't mind if I do while I just hang out for these guys to spawn in. Now, they have a chance of hitting you with three special end fireballs, which give you a new effect known as unstable, which will teleport you around to various different areas every single time you take damage. So, we actually lost our unstable right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do our best to take out these guys right now. Yes, good, oh gosh, I've been unstable. <laughs> I keep getting moved around all over the place. Not what I had in mind, okay. Well, at least the fire does not last terribly long when we take them on, so with any luck, oh my gosh. And they're literally just, oh boy, this is going to be one heck of a battle. We legit keep teleporting everywhere. I'll spare you the trouble. We're in creative mode now. We're just going to take out one of these creatures, which do have the chance at dropping a brand new item. With any luck, one of these guys will not embarrass me. And of course, that one embarrasses me. How about you? you got something? No, another embarrassment. How about you? Something. Anything. <laughs> ah, there we go. So what is this new item that's definitely not just a retextured blaze run? <laughs> Well, it's known as, not the blaze rod, the mysterious rod. <laughs> now, what it lacks in texture, it makes up for in effect. You can turn the mysterious rod into a ground down form of it known as unstable powder, which has two different uses. Combining the unstable powder with some ender pearls will give you an unstable pearl. Now, these unstable pearls share a similar feature set to some previous items. Namely, when throwing them near a creature, it will bring the creature closer to you. Your results may vary. <laughs> Where'd he go? Alternatively, you can add the unstable powder to various different water bottles and awkward potions to make potions of unstableness, which if you drink them, well, give you the unstable effect, which as you saw, will allow you to teleport around every single time you take some form or another of damage. Or you know, most of the time. Now naturally, you can turn these into splash potions and that's going to allow you to use them on, oh my gosh, other mobs. <laughs> Apparently they make you very nauseous as well. But hey guys, that was the Enderman remade five different ways. Let us know in the comments below, not only which one was your favorite, but what mob we should remake next.